Hello, I am the Convalescing Soul. Welcome to my channel. I'm so grateful that you are here with me today for um, another beautiful reading. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little bit disorganized. I, I thought I was organized and I'm not. It's a little reminder to be prepared. Always be prepared. Isn't that like from the Boy Scouts? <laughs> we are reading from the Lightworker uh, Oracle Guide. I can't even read. <laughs> but before we do that, we are doing a little mindfulness moment. Mindfulness moment. For those of you that just want like a cute little, like a little, <laughs> I don't know what you call it. Some just a quick little bit of enlightenment and then to go on your way. Because you, we're busy people. <laughs> um, the mindfulness moment card I picked is put your ear down close to your soul and listen hard. What does your soul say? What does your soul need? And that's by Anne Sexton. Thank you, Anne. <laughs> I think we don't listen enough. I remember when I was younger, there was like this saying that always go around, you have one mouth, but you have two ears. What does that tell you? <laughs> you should listen twice as much as you speak, right? <laughs> Sometimes hard to do. I understand. <laughs> okay. You know. 37, which reduces to a 10. The heart transmission. Beautiful earth angel that she is. And she's transmitting little love bubbles from her heart, it looks like. From her heart to yours, <laughs> from mine to yours from the universe to yours. I know I've said it before, but I love that quote. I gotta figure out where it even originated from or who said it, but it's the, um, the saying that no matter the question, love is always the answer. Okay. Shall we read? Deep breath. <laughs> Sometimes I feel the need to take a deep breath before we begin, which makes me think that we're not breathing deep enough. We shallow breathe quite often. Just take, let's take our breath down to our belly. You know what I mean? Just get your breath down, <laughs> down in there, okay? Deeper breathing, people. Beautiful souls. <laughs> okay. Your heart. That's more reminder, I think, for me than for you. <laughs> Your heart is capable not only of giving and receiving love, but connecting you to a great network of beings that resonate in the highest frequencies of divine love. Through your heart, you can receive information and guidance from networks of light that fill our universe. As you learn to open your heart to receiving these transmissions, your ability, <laughs> your ability to work with group consciousness in a loving way increases. Can you hear my dog? He's confirming. <laughs> you shall affect humanity in a loving way, influencing the collective, rather than allowing the lower frequencies of the collective to overwhelm you. Working with group energy is a leap on the spiritual path with risk, but also great reward in terms of empowerment 
to manifest your life mission. The risk with group energy is mitigated when you approach it from the heart rather than the head. <laughs> The mind can argue one point of view and then immediately and convincingly argue its opposite. Did you ever take those debate classes um, in school at whatever level? And often they'd say, okay, what is, you know, your perspective or your point of view on this certain topic? Okay, I want you to argue the opposite. <laughs> it's good. It's a good... It's good for it's good to do that. Perspective is important. The heart, however, either feels something resonates or it doesn't. Whether or not there is a logical explanation for it, the mind can be seduced by those who tell you they have great spiritual power. But this will instantly trigger intuitive warning bells in your heart. For those with genuine power, do not need to convince you of it. Mm, interesting, right? The heart is the key to deciding where you offer your devotion, where you offer devotion to the group consciousness that loves you unconditionally. Your heart feels safe, loved, and an inner knowing of the rightness of that group for you. Whether that group exists on the earthly plane or in a spiritual dimension. For as long as it gives you life, broadens your horizons, nourishes your truths, and empowers you to live your destiny, that group is serving you. If you do not experience these positive effects, if you feel drained, confused, or that your issues are not resolving as you work with this group, listen carefully to your heart and question whether it is indeed the right place for you to be. It is important to also work with groups that you can serve. Although you may love your family, for example, they may not be the group you can best serve. Perhaps those who are open, willing, and receptive to your spiritual gifts are outside of your family. Perhaps your family can benefit spiritually from you in the role of mother or son or daughter, but not in the role of spiritual mentor. On the other hand, some groups may want to feed off of you. <laughs> I think of like little fish feeding off of you. Okay, anyways but not learn to do so for themselves. They may wish for you to give them the answers to their problems. They may not be willing to develop the trust, courage, confidence, and empowerment that is required to take responsibility for their own relationship to the universe, which is needed so they can grow in soul wisdom through their life experiences. Your heart may guide you to withdraw your services from such people because you love them and want them to grow. Your heart will guide you to operate differently with different people. You may be guided to explore hobbies or interests that lead you to the next group that your presence can assist. The heart will also guide you when it is time to move on. The transmission of the heart gives a truthful assessment in the interaction of your frequency with the frequency of a group. It is minimally, oh sorry, is it mutually <laughs> raised, but talking about your frequency, then this is a spiritually constructive connection. Is it diminished? This will not be so helpful. The heart empowers you to know when to work with others, for how long, and in what way. Trust it. The more you do, the more groups which can bring, bring great benefit to you and to the planet can enter your world. It is time now <laughs> for the invocation. 
So I like to just pause, remind you to take another deep breath, close your eyes, and open your ears. <laughs> um, whenever I teach young children, or yeah, there's this cute saying <laughs> I like to use, it's so cute. It's uh, especially when they're especially like chatty. You say, Tootsie Roll, Lollipop, you've been talking, now you stop. <laughs> okay. Okay. The invocation. <laughs> I have gratitude now for the heart transmission that guides me through universal love into the group consciousness that can best serve the greatest good and my own divine destiny. I ask for protection, insight, clear knowing, and clear feeling to guide me through the many groups that I will love and work with spiritually this lifetime. May all my group involvements be constructive. May love, light, and power increase in me and upon the earth through all group work, blessed by grace. May the unconditionally loving ones help all group endeavors attain spiritual success through my own free will and divine love. So be it. Okay. Um, The whole time I was thinking of a Tootsie Roll because I said that. <laughs> and then the lollipops. Oh, of the lollipop that has a Tootsie Roll in the middle. <laughs> Those are good. Okay. Thank you so much for being here with me today. <laughs> I'm feeling silly. I don't know why. Maybe it's a good day to be silly. <laughs> if you're feeling silly too, go do something fun. <laughs> Let your inner child, that's what it is, let the inner child come out and play. <laughs> May you always find yourself in the light. Much love and many blessings.